Hi, everybody. Well, yesterday we looked at uh, relationships and graphs and how two things relate to each other. Um, today we're going to take a look at how those different relationships can be represented in different forms and then also identify from those relationships the domain and range of that relationship. Uh, so we're just going to go through some examples and then we'll have plenty of practice tomorrow in class. All right, so here we have multiple representations of relations. Express the relation 2, 3, 4, 7, 6, 8 as a table, as a graph, and as a mapping diagram. And we'll talk a little bit about what a mapping diagram is in a minute. But if you're given a set of ordered pairs, one way that you can do is you can just strictly put it in the table, 2, 3, written four, four, seven, seven. So we can translate from a set of ordered pairs into a table, or we could go from a table and put everything into an ordered pair. So if you see six and eight, you know that that translates into an ordered pair of six and eight. Nothing complicated about that. Another way that you can represent the data is you can actually physically graph it. So here we have 2 comma 3, so over 2, up 3. We have 4 comma 7, over 4, up 7, and we've just graphed it. Reverse ways, we could be just given a graph and see 6 and 8. We can write it as 6 comma 8. We can put that information into a table, 6 comma 8. So I don't want you to restrict yourself in the manner in which the data is given to you, but I want you to understand that you can switch back and forth between a table, a graph, ordered pairs, or even this mapping diagram, which we're going to talk about right now. A mapping diagram basically just says, these are all my x quantities, these are all my y quantities, and my 2 relates to my 3. Now, it could be such that the 2 also produces a 7. Or we could have the 4 also produces the 3 and doesn't give me the 7. And so it's just a kind of a shortcut manner. We could rewrite this to 4, 6, 3, and 8. 2 relates to 3, 4 relates to 3, and 6 relates to 8. And that's all it is. The arrows point to, if I have the number 2, what is my output y, in this case, 3. Let's take a look at another example. All right. So we will need to put 1, 3 into a table. 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 4, 3, 5. We've translated from the ordered pairs into the table. We could translate from the table into the ordered pair. We have 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 4, 3, 5. And hopefully graphing is not an issue. If that is an issue, please make sure you talk to me tomorrow. And then one last time with the mapping diagram. 1 gives me 3, 2 gives me 4, 3 gives me 5, 1 is related to 3, 2 is related to 4, 3 is related to 5. And so a mapping diagram very much looks like a, a table, except in, the, in an example coming up, you, you'll see again, just like I showed you, that sometimes the 1 will produce a 3 and a 4, or they'll even share a number, like we did in the, fir the, the previous example. Okay, let's move on. So domain and range couple of things here on domain and range. First of all, the domain is just is the set of x values or the first set of coordinates of an ordered pair. And range is the set of y values or the second coordinates. Now sometimes people tr have a hard time remembering which belongs to which. The way I remember this is the end of my alphabet is x, y, z. My ordered pair, thankfully, is x, comma, y. And d comes before R. Okay? So domain always belongs with X. Range always belongs with Y. So domain basically says is, what are my options? What are my choices? So in a track meet, you can come in first. 
You can come in second, you can come in third, or you can come in fourth. And range is what's the outcome of that. Okay? Well, range says here, if I come in first, I get five points. If I come in second, I get three points. Third, two points. And fourth, one point. And so from now on, every time I get come in third, I know that I'll receive two points. Every time I come in first, I know I'll receive five points. So my domain is my choices, and my range is my output values. And everything is always going to come back into an ordered pair. So let's take a look at some different ways that we can look at that. All right, so in this example, my line goes from 1 to 5. So all the x's are here. I can choose this x, this x, this x, this x, all the way up to 5 and including 5. And I can go all the way down to 1, but no less than 1. And so they've written the, the final answer over there, but I want to show you how we come up with that. We know that 1, we know that x is greater than or equal to 1, right? We know it's bigger than 1. And we also know that x is less than or equal to 5. Okay, so how do we make it look like this, all pretty down here? Well, remember when we had something that looked like this, 1 is less than or equal to x. We flipped the sign and moved it across. Well, we can do the exact same with this. We'll do 1, flip the sign, x. And I have my x here, and this will just drop down into here. So I can rewrite all of that, 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5. And so it's just a shortcut so we don't have to write this twice. x is greater than 1, x is greater than or equal to 1, x is less than or equal to 5. Now my range, the smallest number that I'll ever get out is a 3. The largest number I'll ever get out is a 4. Okay, so y is greater than or equal to 3, and y is less than or equal to 4. Shortcut is, write the smallest number, 3, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 4. So shortcut, smallest number, largest number, less than, less than variable. Smallest number, largest number, less than, less than variable. Remember domain and x are always together. Range and y are always together. And so basically we just said that the numbers I can choose are between 1 and 5 and the output information that I can expect to see will always between always be between 3 and 4. Okay. In this particular diagram, we have 6, 5, 2 and 1, so my domain is limited to those specific numbers. 6, 5, 2 and 1. And my range, the only output values I can get is -4, -1 and 0. Negative 4, negative 1, and 0. I don't have any numbers in between. Those are it. Okay? So you can see here that 5 produces a 0 and 1 produces a 0. You can see how my mapping diagram doesn't necessarily have to have the same number of x's as the same number of y's. And the last example I think we have here is here I have my domain limited again to 1 4, and 8. My y, I have a 1, a 4. I do not need to repeat. Okay? I have a 1 and a 4. So my domains that I can choose are 1, or my x's I can choose are 1, 4, and 8. The outputs that I will always get and only get are 1 and 
four. Now we're going to have plenty of time to practice this tomorrow, but I do want you to make sure you have good notes so you'll be able to explain to me when you come into the class the difference between domain and range, the, the three different ways that we've talked about tonight of table, graph, and mapping for your um, ordered pairs, and uh, make sure you write down any questions that you have on the video. That'll do it for tonight. Uh, there is no video, there is no post video quiz. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.